about the hand. Well, what I know, I don't see any problem at all with what the boss is doing. And reef in gumnut land, a snuggle pot and cuddle pie get a makeover. May Gibbs is as much a part of our literary history as the man from Snowy River. It's children's literature, and while her gumnut characters, snuggle pot and cuddle pie, grace everything from doona covers to toiletries, it's the latest money-making venture that has attracted fire. Publishers are reprinting a new series called The World of May Gibbs, which changes not only the words, but also the famous pictures of the original works. Claire Forster reports. This book is called Snugglepot and Cuddlepie, and it's written by May Gibbs. Here are the adventures of Snugglepot and Cuddlepie. They were foster brothers, and this is how it came about. When Cuddle Pie was very small, that is, when he only had been out of the bud a few hours, a great wind arose and lifting him out of his mother's arms, carried him far across the, the tops of The adventures of Australia's trees. most famous gumnut babies were being introduced to yet another generation of children today. These under fives were blissfully unaware of the row erupting in the literary and art world over the integrity of Cuddle Pot and Snuggle Pie. She was afraid. But the ticket, she must get it. May Gibbs is as much a part of our literary history as the man from Snowy River. And you wouldn't change a line of that. Why change May Gibbs? Mrs. Snake rustled her scales and flicked her tongue in glee as she stood along after little ragged blossom. May Gibbs holds a special place in the hearts of Australians. More than two million copies of her original works have been sold. On her death, she bequeathed the future profits of her works to two children's charities. They've agreed to a reprint of her most popular series, Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie, with marked changes. Passages have been omitted and changed, and new illustrations have been added. Substitutions which have drawn fire from the head of the organisation, which represents Australia's 600 cartoonists. So you can't fight it on a, on a technical or political level, but you can fight it on a, on a moral level and question whether or not people have the right to corrupt and, and vandalise intellectual property of this kind, especially when it has a, a national heritage value to it. Corrupt and vandalise, isn't that a bit over the top? No, not at all, not at all. Um, it, it, like I said before, it's a bit like repainting the Sistine Chapel because someone's offended by a rogue nipple. You just don't do it. In the early 1990s, the May Gibbs Foundation was set up to save the artist's home and garden from demolishers. The group is appalled at the revised editions and says May Gibbs would not be happy. Just prior to her death, I believe uh, she'd been approached by A&R to, to make some minor changes to her work and she, uh, she voiced uh, her dissatisfaction with that. So I know that she would be very, very unhappy to see that. And May Gibbs said, I had one very decided feeling about doing things, that you must never copy a single line from anyone else, and I hated anyone to copy my work. In the new editions, which still boast the Gibbs name, colour pictures replace black and white sketches, and exclamations such as good root, meaning good news, have been taken out. It's a, it's a tampering, it's, a, it's sort of niggling around the edges, and all these things, uh, I think, destroy the originality and character of, of, of a work. You could probably launch a new series of adventures with the consent of the copyright owners. But um, to go back and, and whitewash and change history, I think anybody would find that objectionable. But the trustee for the charity and publishers Harper Collins disagree. Neither wish to appear on camera, but the publisher said the imagery of May Gibbs had often been reprinted since her death for pure commercial exploitation. In a statement, the trustee argues the reworking in no way compromises the original works of May Gibbs. But critics have urged book lovers to take a stand and boycott the new versions. Ask for the original May Gibbs editions and put pressure on people to, to supply those. I'm scared that the whitewashed editions with the wonderfully politically correct ideals are going to be the official definitive editions and you won't find the original May Gibbs anywhere. Claire Forster with that report. While Prime Minister John Howard was telling Parliament in Canberra today that Aborigines' right to negotiate...